everyone, welcome to, it's actually going to be the last 10 Thoughts Cruising video, but this one is about Brazil, Recife. Specifically Recife. Specifically, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got, as usual, lots of blog posts from our time in Brazil. I'm going to link to those down in the description. Also, we've got a noon site report that we have done, and we're going to link to that down in the description as well. And finally, we discuss lots of different topics in this video, and if you're only interested in one or a couple of them, down in the description, surprise, surprise, there will be links to each of those topics so you can go check out which ones you are interested in. I think that covers it, so let's dive on in and talk about number one, why we chose Recife. There's a lot of options to choose from in the Brazilian coast, and there's not a lot of consensus from cruisers on where exactly to go. We wanted to stop because we felt that I, more specifically, felt that sailing from St. Helena to the Caribbean in one go would have been too long. It would have been, I think, our longest passage of our entire circumnavigation if we'd yeah. gone the whole way. And that's yeah. a long freaking ways. So Brazil is a good stop halfway between St. Helena and the Caribbean. And then when we were choosing where in Brazil to go, it was kind of an easy solution for us because our friends Hans and Karina live in Recife. Yeah, we've known them for a long time before we even had Starry Horizons. Uh, it always kind of been on our little list, like, oh, we're going to be coming up that part of the Atlantic. It'd be great to stop in and see them. So it all just kind of worked out perfectly together to come into Recife and explore a little bit of little bit of Brazil that way. Absolutely, and it was so great to have locals there with us. It very helpful, which yeah. we'll talk about for <laughs> sure. Uh, number two, the formalities in Brazil. Uh, fortunately, it was totally free, so that's good. We did have the unfortunate timing of arriving during Carnival. Unfortunate I say unfortunate fortunate. only from this perspective, <laughs> because all the government offices were closed. That always makes us a little bit nervous when we come in and we can't actually, you know, clear in and do all the get official legal. formalities and get legal and all that stuff. Plus, it was Carnival, which we wanted to get out and see. Uh, but fortunately, no one seemed to care that we had been there for a little while during Carnival before offices opened again and we were able to go clear in. And it wasn't just they were closed for Carnival. It was... They were closed for Carnival, and then there were some extra days for, like, government employees to get off. And so it was. It took quite a while for us to get cleared in. Yeah. Now, there were, like, three different places that you had to go, and uh, they have Portuguese names, which I'm not going to try to pronounce. So I would strongly suggest, if you're interested, that you go check out AR Report on Noon site down below. Um, and also, B, I think some more information is in our uh, blogs as well. So you can go check out kind of the order in which you're supposed to visit all those places. We've even put GPS coordinates on our Noon site Report, mm -hmm. really trying to help you out so you can figure out where to go. <laughs> um, now, we did stay in a marina, which is kind of the home club of our friends um, Hans, and Hans and Karina, which was the Cabanga Yacht Club. <laughs> I think that's how you would say in Portuguese. Hans, please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, the marina staff was super helpful as well. They gave us a map and some information on where to go around and um, find the offices as well. So that was super, super duper helpful. Absolutely. And on departure, it was basically the same three office visits in the opposite order. Just in reverse. And it was easy peasy. Yeah. Uh, so that was... The formalities, at least in Recife. We did not go to any of the other right. locales as well, so we can't really speak to how easy it is in some places. I have heard that some places are more difficult than others, but uh, Recife at least was pretty easy. And in Brazil, I believe you're supposed to do domestic clearance between ports, so that is a complication. Yeah, uh, which was another one of the reasons why we decided to just come into one place, because made it easier to just clear in, clear out, and... Move on. Move on. Yeah. Yeah. So. Number three, the marina. As we said, we stayed at Cabanga, which is a mid-range price compared to everywhere else we've been in the world. I read on noon site that it was expensive, and I really don't think that it was expensive. Um, and it had excellent facilities. It was it's really a impressive. very, very nice marina. There were two pools, a sauna, uh, restaurants, multiple restaurants. Outdoor kitchen, so you could buy charcoal and then you could grill your food and wash all your dishes out there. There was a fitness center. Like a full-on fitness, full fitness center. Full-on fitness center. a while since we'd seen that. And Wi-Fi. So that's more amenities than we'd gotten from a marina in, I don't know, two years probably. Yeah. So it was, it was a really nice spot. The um, 
there were a lot of different uh, like shower and restroom facilities around the marina and some of them had been remodeled and some hadn't so if you wanted the nicer ones you might have had to walk a little ways but still it was a very very nice place to be it was a very popular spot amongst locals too like i think oh my Hans God. told me that yeah. there's about like a six to one ratio of boat owners to you know, <laughs> club members or something like that so you know, there were just a lot of people coming around, especially the weekends, using the pool and the, the weekends, outdoor the facilities. Pool was packed. Yeah, Oof. so it was definitely a, a, a nice place to be, and lots of people around as well. So if you're going in towards Recife, strongly recommend that marina. The only negative of the marina was that it's not in a very walkable location, and that, I mean, it is what it is. That's where the marina is, and um, there's just nothing super close. But Ubers are available and very cheap, and it was a short ride to get to the Rio Mar Mall, and it was a short ride to get to Recife Antigo, which is the historic city center. So yeah. that wasn't too bad. Yep, exactly. Moving on, talking about some marine services. Um, there are actually some marine services in Brazil. Now, the yacht club we were at, they had a few kind of services right there in the club themselves. Yep. We were able to get a little bit of uh, sewing work done while we were there. Um, but, again, you're not going to find, like, just one big West Marine chandlery or anything like that. Like, if you're going out looking for parts, you got to really look and go to some different places hoping that you can find what you're looking for. Uh, they do have some very big box-style home improvement stores, uh, which have very similar to, like, Home Depot or... Um, uh, what is in Australia? Lowe's. Oh, oh, Bunnings. Bunnings, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Yeah. So they do have that, which is a great resource as well. Um, we had a pretty big project that we had to tackle. We were there. Our force day started having some problems. The screws were coming, coming undone. We needed to have some machining work. And this is where our friends Hans and Karina really helped us out because they were able to find like a machinist that they knew who'd retired but still had all his stuff in his garage. So Hans like literally took me over there and talking to the guy in Portuguese, because I don't speak Portuguese, but was trying to explain what we needed done and showing him pictures of the yacht. And this guy did beautiful work just, you know, out of his garage and super cheap. Got it back to me like the next day when I was expecting it was yep. going to take like weeks or something. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit maybe who you know, but the Yacht Club is definitely going to be a good resource for trying to find very specific projects for people how much you're working on. And when we had that force day issue, we did inquire about a rigger, and there is no rigger available in receiving. Yeah, so it's gonna be a little bit of a do-it-yourself type thing, but there's ways to find a little bit of that help to do it yourself, shall we say. Yeah. Number five, dining out. Oh man, was it good. <laughs> Woo! We didn't know much about Brazilian food coming in other than like churrasco and caipirinhas, but we learned so much about Brazilian food in general, but also about the regional foods that were available in Recife, and it was such an unexpected treat. Oh, like, it was really, really We good. ate a lot of dishes that were amazing. Uh, m a lot of that was thanks to Hans and Karina, who took us to a, a regional cuisine restaurant, and they took us out to a churrascaria, and they had us in their home for dinner one night. I'm surprised they weren't sick of us by the end of this yeah. whole thing, to be completely <laughs> honest, but they were super awesome hosts. They were great. So we had churrasco, we had a little um, pastry stuffed with meat called a casinha, casinha, uh, the pronunciation. Uh, at the churrasco place and at Hans and Karina's house, we had chicken hearts, which was It unusual. was a little bit of a surprise when Hans mentioned what he was grilling up, but, uh, you know, we wanted to try, and surprisingly, it was quite good. It was very good, actually, and Hans just grilled it with a little bit of salt. Perfect. It's actually their son Lipe's favorite dish. Yeah. Which is cool. Can move on to number six, which is the CPF. I am not even going to try to pronounce <laughs> what this uh, actually, or what it stands for. But it's essentially the Brazilian equivalent of like the US Social Security number. So it's like an identifying number that Brazilians have mostly for tax paying purposes, I think is what I understand. It's a kind of hard to do things without one in Brazil. Uh, yeah. Like, we had a bit of an adventure trying to get a SIM card, even though supposedly you're supposed to be able to use your passport, which is what most countries allow you to do. Mm -hmm. um, but we were really unable to get a SIM card without this uh, CPF. And fortunately, our friends Hans and Karina were 
willing to let us... Oh, should we say that? They let us borrow theirs. <laughs> I hope the government's not watching. Um, but so it was a bit of a challenge. You can get one of the CFPs as a foreigner if you do so probably the easiest way is in advance because you have to go to like the Brazilian embassy or consulate which there is a consulate in Cape Town so before you leave South Africa if you know you're gonna be stopping in Brazil it could be worth going and getting into that process if you have the time. Um, I do believe you can apply for one within the country um, but fortunately since we had Hans and Karina we didn't do too much investigating into that but just be aware that if you're gonna um, be in the country, it could be worth doing some research on the current practices for getting a CFP, CPF as a foreigner. Yes. Now, one, one thing that kind of surprised me that we needed it for was to do laundry. Yeah, this was really weird. I went to the laundromat, the self-service laundromat, and they had a little thing to give yourself credit and start the machine, and you needed a CPF to start it. Yeah. So, just... Do your research, see if you can get one before you get there, because it make life a lot easier. Let's talk about number seven, things to do in Recife. And first and foremost, try to time it so you get there in time for Carnival. That was so worth it. Even though we're not party animals and we were back to the boat by 10 o'clock, it still gave us a really great look at Brazilian street food, Brazilian music, and a lot of the Brazilian culture that we hadn't known before, like the different types of song and dance and the costumes that they wore as like a um, Portuguese royal court type style and the amazing local dancing. It's just, it was, it was amazing. It was loud, it was a party, it was a lot of fun. They go until, I mean, we would wake up in the morning and you could still music hear the still party going. from Antigo, Recife, Recife Antigo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, it is a very different style of carnival celebration depending on where you are in Brazil. So, like, if you're in Rio, it can be totally different than what you're seeing in Recife. Even from Recife to Olinda, um, which is just a little bit to the north, also completely different. So, you're going to get a different flavor depending on where you are, but still worth it to go and check out. Now, if you want to explore some of the, uh, the parts of Recife, parts of Recife Antigo, that's an easy trip from the Camega Yacht Club and there's several historical buildings and interesting architecture in that heart of old Recife. Yeah, Recife Antigo is basically old Recife, so it's kind of the original part of the port. Yeah. And it's a pretty fascinating little place. We also took a day trip up to Olinda, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it was founded by the Portuguese in the early 1500s, so actually before any city in America was founded, in the United States of America was founded. And it's got excellent architecture and fascinating history and beautiful viewpoints over the city of, the modern day city of Recife now. Yep, cool we, little tour up there. We tried to do the free walking tour, but there was some issue with our tour guide, and so it was late, and then the tour guide ended up only doing the tour in Spanish. Well, to, to be fair, the, the tour guide who was supposed to come somehow didn't, but we were there for the English uh, tour, and the tour guide who came at the last minute, when it wasn't even their time, was yeah. the Spanish-speaking tour guide. And while we do speak some Spanish... It was not going to be at a level where we could understand what was going right. on. So we did kind of a self-walking tour around, and it was still, there was just a lot to go and see and do, and it was worth the trip up there for sure. One thing that we didn't do that would have been nice is that there is a bike tour of modern Recife City, and we didn't really get to explore that part of the city very much at all. But one thing we did do, thanks to Hans, he took us down to Puerto de Galinas, I'm saying that wrong probably. It means the chicken port, <laughs> which is a cute little beachside town. They're very touristy. Very Lots touristy. Of little like uh, resorts on the beach, beach bars, stuff like that. Yeah, but it was very cute and the beach was beautiful and we got some nice viewpoints. It was just a nice little afternoon, afternoon adventure. Yeah, and Hans, um, who we met when, because he actually has a Helia himself. Had. Had a Helia. He's got a new boat, hopefully, by the time this is coming out. Uh, they went and took their boat down to Puerto de Galinas only for a little while because it's not a very protected spot, but you can take a boat down there maybe for a day, go and do some swimming. There's a little bit of snorkeling out there as well, and then move up to the coast for a little bit more protected anchorages. So there are places that you can go cruise and anchor, 
but just not a lot of them. Let's talk about language. Number eight. Oh boy. It was a bit tough for us. Uh, Portuguese is a challenge. Like we've we've been around enough countries that we're picking up some French. Like we understand some basics. We can communicate some basics. Uh, we have a you know. We're certainly not fluent in Spanish by any stretch, but we can communicate uh, fairly well in Spanish. Portuguese was hard. Yeah, I when we arrived, I realized, oh, I don't even know how to say thank you in Portuguese. So that was hard, number one. But then number two, very few Brazilian people speak English. And at every office we went to for our formalities, the SIM card situation was entirely language barrier. So I think it's pretty safe to say it was the biggest language barrier we've encountered on our travels, period, which was difficult. But everybody is familiar with Google Translate and the voice-to-text app that you can use. So we were passing our phones back and forth, talking into the phone, and doing our best to try to communicate that way. A little bit challenging when you're trying to talk about, uh, you know, you're a boat coming in from offshore and need to clear formalities. Google Translate doesn't work super well for some of those things, but... For the SIM card, we ended up doing the phone a friend option and called Hans, who helped us get through everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's a challenge, but, you know, you got to get creative in this kind of like cruising life is... It's just always going to be a little bit of a language barrier, and we, we, we learned a few of the basic phrases in Portuguese while we were there, but just not quite enough to communicate to the level we needed to. So. I mean, Hans even got us saying thank you like a local. Yeah. Briga. 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 <laughs> All right, number nine, provisioning. The provisioning was pretty good. There is a big Carrefour hypermarket that gets, like, hypermarcado, sorry, that had pretty much everything, very well supplied, lots of food. There was also a few shops in the mall, the big mall that we went to, and I found a few smaller shops in Boavia, Boavia, Bo, Boavia something, in, in closer to the downtown Recife. American things were a little harder to find. For example, peanut butter. I do like my peanut butter. David likes his peanut butter. I like peanut butter too. But the peanut butter I found in Recife was all marketed as like a protein. Like I, it must have had extra protein powder in it or something or it was flavored. Like we bought a white chocolate one because that's all we could find at the time. We Plus do, you got to try a white chocolate yeah, peanut butter to see white it. I mean, come on. Butter. How often do you see that? Yeah. Um, and then like maple syrup I couldn't find and stuff like that. But you know, that's fine. We ate very well in Brazil. The fresh produce was excellent. We got to try some new unusual fruits and the food overall was very good. Absolutely. Definitely can find just about anything in Brazil. And I'll suffer without my peanut butter for a little while if I have to. Let's move on to number 10, the final thought, the internet. I'm, I'm still not 100% certain what internet we ended up on because we tried going around to like the big uh, cellular network stores and they just kept turning us away and said go to like this little... You basically go to a department store. A department to get a SIM store card. and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Can you please just get me a SIM card? And so somehow we ended up with a SIM card don't really know much beyond that. We didn't stay in Brazil for super long, so we didn't have to like recharge or anything like that. But the Marina Wi-Fi where we were is really what we used while we were there. Yep. Uh, we would try to download like Google Maps and stuff like that for offline use while we were walking around. Um, downloaded the Portuguese translations so we could use that on the phones as best we could. Uh, so, I mean, the there is internet, but the key takeaway I would say is like, if you want to get a SIM card, don't rely on just being able to use your passport. You probably need to try to get that uh, CPF in advance before you get to Brazil. Yeah, that was challenging. For sure. Let's wrap it up. Okay. What did you think, Recife? I loved the Brazilian food. Oh, That yeah. was by far the highlight. And, sorry, no, the number one highlight <laughs> was seeing Hans and Karina. They were such fabulous hosts for us, and it was so great to see them after six years of friendship all over the world. Second was the Brazilian food. Because Getting things in proper places, yes. That was such an amazing, amazingly unexpected part. I just didn't know that much about Brazilian food, and 
we really enjoyed a lot of the dishes. Absolutely. Yeah. I think for me, going to the Carnival was a kind of a really cool cultural experience. I had lived in New Orleans for a couple years out of school and had been to the Mardi Gras in New Orleans and stuff like that. And that was kind of my expectation of Mardi Gras, a Carnival, and it was totally different. It was just a really cool thing to see and be there and experience. So strongly recommend if you can get time your visit, do that. Absolutely. And if you're not in Recife around the time of Carnival, definitely get up to Olinda. It's got great history, very cute little buildings and architecture, and it's worth walking around. Yeah. And just final note, the marina staff, again, was very helpful at the Cabanga Yacht Club. Um, if you're going to be going in, there is there is a spot you can anchor, but uh, I'd recommend going into the marina. It's just It's a lot easier. It's you know protected. There's security, so it's a good good place to be. There's more about options in our noon site report if you're curious. There you go. All right, guys, as I mentioned, this is going to be our last 10 Thoughts cruising video because after this, we headed back up to the Caribbean and there's all kinds of thoughts and <laughs> stuff on the Caribbean. You don't need to hear anything special from us. But uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this series as we've kind of gone through starting in the Indian Ocean, coming this way. Actually, even that. Indonesia, I think Indonesia we started the first one. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully a little bit of insights into some rarer cruising grounds that most people don't get a chance to visit. You find this helpful. And, you know, follow in our wake. We'd love to hear comments from you guys if you watch this and then end up in places we've been to. So thanks for watching, sticking with us. We've had a good time presenting all this information to you. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. Bye.